dynamic range. Ah, 112 single kick drum. I imagine with uh, double kicks and maybe a crash or something, we'll be up around 118, 119, 120, something like that. But uh, let's go over to my office and then we'll talk about doing. Oh, did you say more cowbell? I frequently have audio files approach me uh, to discuss 24 bit recordings and how much they love what the new recording capabilities are and what they can do with all this extra dynamic range. And that kind of brings me to the topic of are you really 24 bit capable in your system? Uh, a, a, an example of how we can look at this is to say that when we were at 16 bit, uh, the dynamic range we have with 24 bit is really about 35 dB greater difference. And a lot of that is based on signal to noise ratio of the, of the DACs themselves, the codecs. So uh, knowing that you've got this extra 35 dB, where does that go? Well, in an ideal world, half of that would go downwards. In other words, you'd like a quieter environment to play things back in. Um, you'll be able to, if you had a quieter room, you'd appreciate the recording being a lot quieter than it was. The second thing is that uh, dynamically, say you split the other half of it at 17 and a half dB upwards, then you would have tremendously more transient capability or dynamic capability and just a, a lot more sense of authority or power um, not, on, on, on crescendos in general. So uh, bit depth is really about the, the various volume levels that were allowed. Right. So. Is your system really 24-bit ready? We know 24-bit affords significantly greater dynamic contrast, but how much more amplifier power is needed to take advantage musically? Realistically, 10 dB or twice the perceived level on transient crests. So if you were listening with 60 watts with a 16-bit recording, 600 watts would be needed even if listening at the same average listening volume. That's a lot of difference in power, but it's also a lot of difference in the punctuation of, of musically.